everyone. Welcome to another episode of Campfire Conversations. I'm Daniel and this is Trudy. And we're down here at the wonderful Swan River foreshore here in Crawley after International Mud Day celebrations here at our Kin Village programs. <laughs> what a wonderful day to celebrate. It started about seven years ago by Gillian McAuliffe at Ball Park Community School and Vishnu from an orphanage school in Nepal got together to celebrate mud together. Kids in Nepal don't have spare change of clothes, so they can't get dirty and they don't have soap to clean up with. Our kids here are used to a clean culture where they need to ask parents for permission to get dirty. So lots and lots of places around the world have been jumping on this amazing uh, experience of Mud Day and having Mud Days of all different shapes and sizes. And we thought we would have one here with Educated by Nature because we find here in Perth that mud is a, a hard thing to find. Unless you're along a river that's got clay base in the soil, um, most of us are comfortable about going to the beach or the river shore for, sh foreshore or in the backyard where it's very sandy. In the sand, you can get dirty in sand but it's really pretty clean and it just brushes off your skin quite easily. Clay, on the other hand, is sticky and gooey and it can be a bit stubborn to get off sometimes. So it takes a lot more risk-taking bravery to actually smear it all over your face or your hands or your feet. I can feel mine uh, starting to crack at the moment. It's quite a sensory experience, <laughs> in fact. So we use mud and clay a lot at all of our programs here at Educated by Nature uh, because it is a sensory risk-taking for children, but also the parents as well. And we love to see that process of the journey between checking out what the experience is and trying to kind of uh, know what the clay is and what we can do with it. Watching others, so a lot of kids just stay on the side and they watch for a very long time to see other kids interact. And um, often it only needs some kind of gentle invitation of a tiny piece of clay on your finger up to a child that's a little bit unsure and to get them to touch it and then gently coax them into the clay because it is quite scary for some kids. One of my favourite things to do with that process actually is to have a little bit of clay on my finger, sloppy clay, and then very carefully place it on my nose. The joy in the child's face is uh, indescribable um, <laughs> of the craziness of my act, uh, but also that permission that, oh, this actually is okay. We, we can do that. We can do um, experiments with this clay and get it on ourselves and that's okay. Other kids are just joyful and love clay a lot. My favourite thing to do is dancing in slippery clay on a mat, having it squelch in between your toes, chucking sand, and we've been putting these pine needles in the clay this morning, a bit like cob where you put hay and sand and clay together and you smoosh it all through your feet and your toes and you feel it change uh, texture and sensation. And if we put it on a mat, it becomes slippery, which is also a bit dangerous, but you can slide mm. and have a lot of fun with that. So we hope that you can find a time on the 29th of June to play in clay, to have a mud day of your own, maybe smear some clay on your face. People pay hundreds of dollars for a clay treatment like this, Trudy. But you don't need to go to a beauty salon. No. You, you can... could go to a gardening store and get some bentonite clay in a big packet. Mm -hmm. It's dry, so watch your eyes. Not good to get in your eyes or breathe in. But once you mix it with water, that's from down the southwest of WA, which is a great resource. Or we go to an art supply store and get a big um, block of potter's clay. So we challenge you to get dirty with clay, have a fun mud day, and you can always share those photos with us on our Facebook page. That'd be great. See you next time. Bye.